high. We're going to walk together. We're going to stand together. We're going to sing together. We're going to stay together. We're going to moan together. We're going to groan together. And after a while, we have said, freedom, freedom, freedom now. It's been 60 years since Martin Luther King Jr. marched alongside thousands of black Americans and allies to gather at the Washington Monument. 250,000 people stood for equal rights, access to jobs, and voter rights for black people in the United States. A few of those people hailed from the small city of Albany, Georgia. But unknown to most, that small city had a larger impact on a movement that changed the nation. Before delivering the famous I Have a Dream speech, Martin Luther King Jr. heard about a movement that was going on in South Georgia. From there, the Good Life City became the training ground for the largest civil rights movement in history. And so when, and when folks start talking about the Albany movement was a failure, I, I beg to differ. I certainly take nothing from Dr. King. But the real, the real story is Albanians had begun a movement. What Dr. King brought to the movement was his celebrity status. The Albany movement began in August of 1961 with desegregation and voting rights for black people being the overall goal. Two prominent organizations, the NAACP and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, came together to take the first steps toward equal rights for black people in Albany. However, these efforts and Dr. King were met with pushback from both white and black people. A lot of people did not like him felt like he would distract from the movement. Um, a lot of churches and people were pulled in different directions because banks were tied into the church to churches where their loans were tied into the bank. So they um, thought about protesting, thought about doing something. Uh, they would get their bank loans defaulted on. This meant that there were people in Albany who were not willing to risk the few rights they had, which is why Dr. King's visit received mixed reviews. Still, the ones who were brave enough to make the change persisted. Albany activist Frank Wilson was a teenager when the movement began, so his participation was limited in the movement. I was here in Albany. I was attending uh, summer school at Monroe High School. So I really got an opportunity to go to some of the mass meetings, participate in some of the marches. I was limited because I didn't know how my daddy was going to feel about it. Wilson eventually became more involved as he got older. He later became the director of the Albany chapter of the National Urban League and was able to slowly see the changes being made that were the result of the movement in Albany. Stirred a spirit within me that has kind of still lives with me and kind of pushes me, drives me to do the things that I do. In the summer of 1963, black Americans across the country began to list their demands and organize the desired outcome for the March on Washington. Two years prior, in December of 1961, MLK traveled to Georgia and spent eight months learning about what works and what doesn't from black people in Albany. He would eventually take what he learned in Albany to begin the movement in Birmingham and eventually to Washington. One of the most important tools he picked up was music. Songs and the voices of the freedom singers would become the force to carry black Americans through the entire civil rights movement. I sang during the mass meetings and my voice was heard and I was chosen to become one of the original freedom singers. This group was formed during the Albany Movement, and it was formed for the purpose of raising funds for Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. The group consisted of Cordia Reagan, Charles Neblett, Bernice Johnson Reagan, and yours truly, Ruther Harris. Songs like Ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn Me Round and Freedom is a Constant Struggle were born out of the movement from the original Freedom Singers. The songs were meant to uplift spirits and help people continue to move forward in the literal face of their oppressors. When I started singing these Freedom songs, <laughs> that I would be where I am today. Um, because the songs of the Civil Rights Movement played a very vital role. They kept us from being afraid. Say for instance, you walk on a march, and you see this policeman with a billy club, and you know, you just know. Because of the songs she sang in the mass meetings during the Albany movement, Ruth's voice carried her across the United States, eventually landing her on the Washington Monument on August 28, 1963. How does it feel to be a part of history and to know that you had a voice in changing the way society works? 
I feel humble. Um, I have so many different feelings about it. Um, of course, I never knew that participating in the civil rights movement, singing the songs, would take me to places I've never gone. On that day, the voices of the freedom singers would precede words from prominent activists like Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth, Roy Wilkins, John Lewis, and one of the most influential speeches in American history, Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech marked a turning point in the national civil rights movement. At what point did you realize that this movement was going to change the nation? At what point? Mm -hmm. Wow. I guess at the March on Washington, doing his speech, he said he had a dream. Shortly after the March on Washington, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed by President Lyndon B. Johnson. According to the NAACP, the Civil Rights Act prohibits the discrimination of black people making segregation illegal. In 1965, the National Voting Rights Act was signed into law prohibiting discriminatory voting practices. And there was this young man who was 90 years old. He had never written his name, never signed his name couldn't read nor write. I taught him how to sign his name so that he could become a registered voter. Martin Luther King Jr. served and still serves as the figurehead of an entire generation of black Americans and their struggle to gain freedom and rights in American society. Rutha, Frank, and Dr. Pratt say some of the dream has been realized, but we still have a long way to go. What would be the message that you have to like people in my generation or even the younger generation that, you know, want to be these trailblazers in the community. When you see uh, efforts like we see in Florida to destroy, distort, and, and to just totally write us out of history or to water down that history so much that it does not even begin to look like the history that we know, uh, that would be my message to read, read. Nobody can take away from you what you know. They may be trying to limit it, but they can't take it away from you. You got to want to do it, and you've got to have a passion to do it. And if you got to stand alone, you got to stand alone by yourself. Parts of the Voting Rights Act were wiped away in 2013, and Congress has still failed to act on that. So I would tell an activist that's growing up now, don't be afraid to stand alone. Don't be afraid to push against people that um, say they align with you, remain courageous.